Hey guys, what's up? It's Legit here, back with another episode of Lawless London. So I've got a couple of videos lined up for you today, which I think you'll like. So let's get straight into it and crack off with the first one. So this video comes in from Yoro. Now he's riding back at about 2.30 a.m. in the morning and he gets approached by these two guys who have been following him and they're shouting over to him and Yoro fears for his safety. He's trying to get away from him. Look, he's now on the opposite side of the road going on the opposite side of the central reservation into oncoming traffic, which is a car coming ahead. So he gets over here, almost tries to kind of like nod at the guys for some kind of help. If only it could have happened, he dodged that reservation there. He's using so much concentration of thought to dodge these moped thieves and the central reservation uh, and the islands as well, because obviously he hits those, he's going to go down. Uh, now he's not wearing gloves, so he can't afford to do that. Uh, Euro acknowledges that as he's on a one 2 he doesn't have the power uh, and the talk to get away from these two guys. So he's doing the best thing he can by staying slow and not trying to outrun them. If he tries to outrun them in speed, he's going to be putting himself in even more danger and risking his life as well as others by speeding and possibly losing control of the bike. Now he did pass a petrol station just here. Uh, I did have a thought that perhaps he could have rode around there a lot more CCTV. The, um, the attendants in the petrol station are going to be more susceptible to calling the police for guys on mopeds, so you could have had a quicker response. So he's unlocking his phone here. These guys are right beside him. This is dicey as he's concentrating on the bike thieves, his mobile phone, and the road ahead whilst he's on the wrong side of the road. It's crazy amount of uh, multitasking this guy's doing. And he's beeping his horn as well for extra attention, which is really pissing off those guys, which is a great move. So he's going to dial 999. And we're going to learn a little lesson here that not everyone knows. Hi, I got a moped following me. Police, please. There's a moped following me. There's a moped following me. Trying to steal my bike. Uh, there's a moped following me. Trying to steal my bike. I'm in Kirkstall McDonald's. Yeah, please hurry up. They're literally behind me. They're not stopping. They're not stopping. Please, please hurry up because I'm really scared. Seriously. Hurry up, please. Hurry up. Hurry up. Seriously. Good use of his topography, he knows where he's going and he's calling ahead of where the location that he's going to be is so police can start making their way there. That's, that's very good. And keep it in the hall. Now, Euro was faced with an extremely difficult and terrifying situation which none of us want to get caught up in. Now, he's riding along after doing whatever work he's been doing and he gets faced with these two guys on a moped balaclavaed up shouting at him screaming at him and we all know what that means we all know what that's going to be that's a terrible sinking feeling because we all know what these guys are out to do they're out to steal his property and take his valuable bike away from him he's made sure to have his camera on record and he's got some good pictures of him here which is always good to do if you can get any evidence or any intelligence gathering you can on people that's that's just an extra aid in your defense in case anything ever happens so if a speeding camera caught him right now you know it's the last thing at the back of your mind but you could then show as this in evidence saying i'm being uh, chased and i feared for my life and my own personal safety so i was doing this for x y and z reason this car comes across uh, euro kind of gives him a nod to say you know sorry i'm almost in your lane you know, he's still being an absolute gentleman at this point. He's he's not shouting back at them. He's not swearing at them. He's not being violent. He's trying to be safe. He's trying to be responsible. And he's just trying to get back to his house without getting jacked. So, um, you know, I really feel for this guy. As I was saying earlier, it is a lot of concentration. He is thinking about so many things right now. 
He's thinking about, one, his family. He wants to get back to them safely. Two, these bike fees. He doesn't want to let them get his bike. Three, the road. He's got to navigate islands. He's got to navigate chevrons. He's got to navigate debris on the road. And then most importantly, other cars and vehicles. And that is an incredible amount of information to process in such a small reactionary time. So hats off to this guy. He is doing an amazing job. So Euro is going down this road, which looks pretty dead to me. There's literally no traffic. Okay, there's been two cars whilst this video has been going on. So this is probably why these guys have struck in all honesty. It's nice and quiet. They can commit their crimes and get away with it without there being lots of witnesses. So Euro is about to come up to this petrol station, which I mentioned earlier. Again, we all know there's always a stigma of petrol stations don't like you wearing your helmets because people don't pay when they buy their fuel. Now, for me, that would have been a split second idea just to pull in there and slow maneuver around the forecourt, just playing cat and mouse, you know, like you did as a child around the table. Do that around the forecourt. It's going to really annoy the people in the forecourt. You might have people that are going to come out and help you. And there's going to be CCTV. The cashier in the petrol station is going to be on the phone to the police saying, look, there's something dodgy going on here. And you don't have to worry about getting your phone out and unlocking it. That's one less thing for you to worry about. One extra thing for someone else to do. This is where he places his call to 999. Now guys, speaking from one who has experience with this, when you dial 999, it is important to remember you're not speaking to the police straight away. You're speaking to a call taker who is in an office who isn't a police officer, isn't a paramedic, and isn't a fireman. Their only job is to connect you with one of the three emergency services you require. So I've seen so many people that phone 999 and shout, ah, ah, I'm being chased, ah, help me. This person will only take one of three answers. You have to be ready straight away, as soon as you dial 999, to say police, fire, or ambulance. And then they will put you through to the closest fire, police, or ambulance service in your area. That will save massive amounts of time. Now, Euro, obviously, he's really panicked, really scared here. He said, look, people are chasing me. The call taker on the 999 line has said, what service do you require? You know, we're wasting time burning air here. He gets it eventually and says, get me the police, I'm being chased, and the call goes through. Now, at 2.30 in the morning, most call centers aren't going to be crazy busy. Their times are going to have peaked around 11 to 12. Possibly, it's going to be quite quiet in one of the, the 999 call centers. So he's got through to an operator real quick. Now, the operator sounds good by the, by the sounds of it. She's been getting his location, probably writing it on a CAD very quickly and passing it down and dispatching it to local officers. Now, that could be from anywhere from three to seven minutes on an I grade, which is their fastest response to get to this guy. But as he's moving constantly, the response is going to differ because they could be further or closer away to that McDonald's. Now he's changed his mind. He's going to a different location, but he's doing effective and good communication with this officer, telling them where he is going to be in advance, which is great because officers can then plan to get en route to catch up with him and to assist him and possibly to arrest these guys which have been threatening him, harassing him, and causing him distress. So let's go over the points we got from that video and talk about some of the lessons we learned. Uh, one, mostly being awareness and transitional spaces. Now, awareness in this is massive. You always need to know who's around you and be ready to deal with them as soon as they pop up. So it's not like we're sitting at traffic lights and I'm telling you to stay in first gear. This is Euro's already on the road. He's driving and these guys come up to him. That's his awareness. He's noticed them and he has proven that he is aware of his situation. Transitional spaces then comes into play by him keeping his distance from these two bike thieves. He's maintained an effective range that they can't then try and jump over, push him, kick him. He's kept a good transitional space between these two guys and he's maintained it all the way through. Now, should we think about complying versus resisting with these guys? If we comply and give them our bike, what's gonna happen? It might go peacefully, they might stab you, they might kick you, and then you need to think about the consequences of that. You're gonna lose out on your motorbike, insurance is gonna go up, you're gonna be paying off a bike you possibly don't have. It's all things you need to consider in a split second. Another good point on this, point three, is he was considering an ambush. Now, 
I don't know if he thought about it at the time, but I could see that possibly happening. He's going to McDonald's. He's chosen a place where him and fellow colleagues would congregate, which is where most delivery drivers are if you go to McDonald's outside because they're waiting to pick up an order. Now, that would be a great place for him to go and set up a counter ambush against these guys. Great thinking, and I love the way he subliminally did that. Another point I would bring up is possibly having something on you that you could defend yourself with. Now, we need to be very careful about this with British law because by law, you cannot have something on you which is used to defend yourself in the event you are attacked. Our law is crazy, I know, not like the Americans, but hey, we have to deal with it. Now, this doesn't have to mean it's a baton or a gun or a knife. You could carry a bottle that contains some oil and some fairy washing liquid and spray it at the guy's tires. This is gonna cause uh, one, loss of traction, two, massive amounts of grip loss from the brakes, and three, possibly it could cause the bike to lose grip, spin out, and all of that could buy you time to get away from these guys whilst they analyze what's going on. Now, Euro was confronted by these guys shouting at him. So verbalization in this instance isn't something you want to get into. You don't want to get into a debate with these guys. He didn't. He did the right thing. He kept himself quiet and he didn't make himself a vulnerable target. You start getting involved with these guys talking to them, they're going to try and talk you down. They'll try and pick at you. They're hyenas. They're just looking for their little chink in the armor and Euro maintained his armor. Awareness of law enforcement and the emergency services is another thing we can take from this. We've all now seen what Yuri did here and we can all take this as a lesson and learn from it. One of the good points here is it was only one moped that was following him. Although he had multiple attackers chasing him, it was only on one moped. All he had to do was keep his attention on one bike. And we have to remember that Euro did the best he could in the situation that he was given. Now, guys, let's look at the next video and tell me what you think about this. Little bit of a disclaimer on this one before we go into it. The quality of this video isn't the best, so I'm gonna try and maintain the resolution as best I can. Apologies in advance, guys. Uh, right, enough jibber jabber, let's crack on. So as there's no audio to this video, we'll talk over it anyway. These two guys jump off a moped and run up to this 4x4. We don't know why, we're just seeing it from this car's dash cam. They're hitting and smashing in the window and reaching in with their arms to try and get something from the driver. The driver lurches forward on the gas and pushes through. Now you can see the moped rider off to the left there, uh, one of their accomplices. Now this is happening so far, so quick, and the driver is panicked and scared, doesn't know what to do. Right now, we wouldn't know either. But we're going to look at this, analyze it, and break down what's gone wrong and where we would rectify it. So, slowing this down, we see they're driving along an ordinary road when these two guys come running from the front of the queue of traffic and start attacking this car. Now, it's good the driver has initially stopped and given space, but it doesn't help this driver much at all because driving to the right into this uh, lane that is now almost free is going to block the car in and trap them. We notice in the video to come ahead, there is a completely empty space to the left. There's grass, there's more road, but at the time it's incredibly hard to think about what else is going on when two guys are trying to smash in your window. Now the moped rider to the left is acting as a spotter, trying to make sure no one gets out on this side or tries to run away, flee I'm assuming, um, and traffic has seemed to kind of sense what was going on and has spaced itself out to make sure they're not part of it. Now, unfortunately, nowhere here, anyone's joining in to try and stop these guys, but it's very lucky and fortunate that the driver can pull away and get away from these guys as quick as they can. Fortunately, no one else was injured in this attack, but let's just hope next time these guys think about doing this, someone drives into them. It would have been great right now if the car had gone straight into this little scrote and broken his leg or something. But unfortunately, they run back to their little mopeds and they ride off. Now, the driver was left with injuries, but did survive. Uh, let's just think about this for a second. Again, awareness, sitting in traffic, it's very mundane. We all do it, and especially at rush hour, where we take it for granted. We're safe in our little box. Unless those doors are locked and your windows are bulletproof, I wouldn't feel so secure. Now, like we saw there, it only took a few smashes for the guy's hammer to be in the window. This came from two guys on a moped riding through traffic. Now, for some reason, they were disgruntled with this driver. Who knows? They 
could have targeted the driver because he was wearing an expensive watch. It's happened so many times before in London. We all need to think about these things and how they would relate to us so we could protect ourselves inevitably from it and others if we need to. Now guys, let me know what you think about these two clips. They're pretty thought provoking for me and how would you relate to them if you was in those situations? Drop a comment down below. The best one gets pinned as usual. Guys, I've been legit, you've been awesome. I'll catch you in the next one.